The other big story was Tron Armstead. Remember, we just talked to Nick Underhill yesterday, and all was quiet on the Tron Armstead front. Um, there was definitely a hope that maybe that meant that the market wasn't there for him like you thought, and maybe it would be a number that the, Pelic or the Pelicans, the Saints could be okay with bringing Armstead back. I mean, especially when working James Winston back in and needing weapons like wide receivers, right? You, you, you having that left tackle question answered would have been um, huge. Unfortunately, like one of our guys, Danny, as soon as South Beach in the bag came calling, it's time to say goodbye to our boy Teron Armstead. One of the toughest to ever do it in New Orleans as uh, he signs a five-year, $75 million deal with the Miami Dolphins, which is maybe a bit under the 20-plus year, uh, 20 plus a year that he was looking for. Um, now, it can be worth up to 87.5, still not hitting that twin number, but it does come with 43 guaranteed, bro. And he's going into his 10th year in the NFL. I mean, come on. A 10th year left tackle, five years, 80 plus mil, potentially 43 guaranteed. That is a stellar deal. And one that the Saints obviously were um, not willing to match. Not, not willing or, or not even really able to be able to throw that kind of money out there with all of the questions that you have on offense, they just they couldn't have that many resources. Even though they've got a thirteen million dollar dead hit on the cap this year from him, yeah, still like you couldn't have that much money tied into a very good left tackle. Now him, you know, not being available is something we've certainly talked about. But they have so many. They have left tackle. They have I I think two receivers, a tight end. Yeah another running back. They yep. have a lot of things that they had to add to this offense. So, unfortunately, you just weren't in a position to make anywhere close to an offer like this. Can you roll with Hurst as your left tackle? Right now, the left tackles you have on the roster is James Hurst, who filled in okay. You have Landon Young out of Kentucky, who you drafted last year. Okay. And then uh, Gerald Hawkins from LSU oh, wow. is also no way. on the roster. So, Landon, now, Landon Young in Kentucky was a great player, but he's not somebody you want to roll out there as your starting left tackle. He's a swing tackle he is kind of, but Hurst did all right, yeah. right. So I'm saying like but maybe maybe they're just like biting the bullet and accepting a significant downgrade there because of the reality of the situation that you laid out, Jake. This might have opened up a door to draft a tackle. We talked about <sighs> drafting a receiver last year, and you know the Saints love, love, love to draft <laughs> offensive linemen. I mean, you want to watch these Saints fan base get triggered? Yeah. Let them take a let them take a tackle at 18. And I'm not even saying it would be the worst move, right? I think there's value in drafting in the trenches and whatnot, but like, I mean, even even yesterday we were talking about how almost ideally the Saints would sign a free agent wide receiver and draft a first round wide receiver. Yeah. So um, it does open that door. I, I I think I would be surprised if they would step through it. But then again, it's a deep wide receiver draft class, right? So maybe you're sitting here and you're telling yourself, "Look, we can get value in the second round." And 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 old boy, even though his old boy still good that we saw at the Senior Bowl, is he even still going to be on the board in eighteen? What are the mock drafts saying? I know you're, you're kind saying of, Trevor Penning. Yeah, you're saying you're, you're a thumb on a thumb on the pulse mock draft guy. So, depending on who you talk to, Trevor Penning's in like the fourteen to twenty range. Oh, so okay. he's kind of anywhere in there. So if Trevor Penning, who dominated in Mobile, I mean, some really good edge rushers from Ohio State, from Oklahoma, so he went against some of the best. If he's still there at fifteen, and you want to move up to take him, I mean, he's a player that I think is going to be a really good pro. So. It just depends on where you have him. You know, who do you value? Because this is a, a, a tackle heavy draft. When you see some of the top picks are going to oh, be they're going to be tackles. Like Charles Cross is going to be going out of Mississippi State in the top ten. Like he won't be there. I think Trevor Penning, because him being from Northern Iowa, he'll be there. Uh, Evan Neal from Alabama will certainly be gone by that point. Uh, I know there's a tackle out of NC State that's going to be gone by that point. So there's a lot of really good first round tackles in this draft. And if Penning somebody that you do value then you make a move because now you have a, a pretty big hole on your offensive line. Unless James Hurst, who did have to play a lot last year, if you go back and you watch the tape and yeah. you feel good about him at left tackle, then you continue to try to build in the skill position on the offense. Uh, it looks like the stream maybe went down for a second. Okay, I, I, I think we're back up now. Um, yeah, look, I think that um, – and and what what, what kind of makes this all a little interesting too, Jake, is not not that you can rely on this, right? Because Tron Armstead is the outlier, but he was a third round pick. 
Right, he himself was not a first round pick and he made himself into one of the best left tackles in the entire league. Now then again, he also ran the fastest forty time of any offensive tackle ever at the combine, a four seven one, which nobody has it's since moving. touched. Um and so like he he's kind of been an outlier, I guess you could say, his entire life in a lot of ways. So I'm not saying rely on going to third round tackle. It's just that you've done it in the past. So maybe you try to add depth there and you're like, Okay, we'll roll with Hurst and see if anybody can beat him out um I, I i still for whatever it's worth i think i would still commit resources at the wide receiver position uh not uh, again not that this is a one-to-one -one comparison but look at the Bengals, right in all the jamar chase panay sewell drama uh panay sewell's fine uh but there is an argument to be made that a great great a great wide receiver can offer almost as much just as much, maybe more in the case of Chase, can offer more protection than a great O-lineman because of the ability to get open and make plays and the pressure that that takes off the quarterback when it comes to holding on to the ball. So yeah, that That is fair, but also in this draft, there's not a Jamar Chase. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's not, and you're right, it's not one-to-one. -one. And, and, and so that's why, like, Jamar Chase, I would say, made you, he offered better protection than Panay Sewell. Uh, I don't think there's a receiver that is going to offer better protection than Teron Armstead, but maybe a great round one receiver when combined with the return of Mike Thomas, when combined with maybe some sort of solid free agent wide receiver signing. I mean, is Emmanuel Sanders available again? I'm not uh, entirely sure if he's under contract or not. Um, I think there's an argument to be made that you can, okay, even if you're not going to fully make up for the Armstead Absence, I think you can mitigate the damage to a point where, look, hard decisions have to be made. And 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 maybe one of those hard decisions is you just got to roll with Hurst there left Does tackle. this take you out of drafting your quarterback? Because remember yesterday, we talked about it. A lot of people still think the Saints could take a quarterback, sit under Jameis Winston, or maybe even compete for that job. Does this take you out of that considering now you need a left tackle? We know you need two receivers. We know you need a pass catching tight end. We know you have so many questions on offense. Does it take you out of the quarterback market? I mean, I don't, to me, what took you out of the quarterback market is more of just your, your tenor of the off season. And, 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 and I just mean in terms of like what you've said publicly, you are in win now mode. You re-signed Jameis, not just as a stopgap, though he is a potential stopgap, but you also re-signed him because you think maybe he could be the long-term answer. Um, you we, we we mentioned the contract. Two years, 28 mil. What is it? 21 guaranteed. Um, take it's Like we said, it's time to take the governor off. It's time to really see what Jameis can do. Throw the ball 30, 35 times a game. And unless, again, this all goes back to, Jake, unless you're just in love with the guy. Like, if you think Kenny Pickett is that next dude and he's available, then nothing else matters. If you think Malik will, the same thing, right? Like, nothing else matters about winning now, long-term, anything. But I don't know uh, that anybody feels that way about these quarterbacks right now, right? And and and, and maybe so, Well, too. Malik Willis might have changed a lot of opinions well, yesterday. I mean, that throw was sick. Dude. That throw was I mean, he had a, I mean I, look, it was in shorts and a t-shirt, but he had a hell of a day yesterday. Not just the show where he was backpedaling and threw it like 80 yards. That was so crazy. But he had a really nice pro day. I, to me, in my eyes, and I don't know if you agree, you were there as well, he was the best quarterback in Mobile. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I thought he had the best. Well, I week. say that I watched practice like one day, but yeah, you know, I heard. Well, that. okay. Well, the day you went, was he the best? Yes. Okay, I was there every day, and I thought he was the best quarterback there. Uh, Mike Tomlin of the Steelers. We know that they potentially could take a quarterback, even though they signed your boy, Mitchell. Well, and and uh, reports today, if Baker gets cut, they said they would jump at the chance to sign him as well. Okay, so sorry, uh, Mitchell. Doesn't sound <laughs> know, like you're the guy. Dude, I know, sorry, dude. All of a sudden, my boy <laughs> Troops might be killed again. He might be, but um. But Malik so it, Willis. No, I'm saying, but it, you 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 asked the question about like falling in love with a guy. It only takes one team. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, like the Saints could love Matt Corral, could just be in love with him, mm -hmm. and the team, you know, after them, or you know, the, the Chargers are before them. The Chargers don't need a quarterback, but just for instance, like that team could hate that player, and you could love him. Like you just never know. Like Joseph Adai always told me that. He's like, look, Hess, I don't know if I would have been a first round pick, but the Colts loved me. The Colts fell in love with me. I like them. We had a great visit, and I knew I was going to be selected by the Colts. 
He goes, if I didn't get selected by them, I don't know where I would have gone, to be honest yeah. with you, because no other team talked to me like the Colts did. And so that's kind of how it works. It, Clyde it, Edward they, Delaire? And yeah, they, the Chiefs Another is perfect. Example. Like Mahomes like, hey, go get my guy. And they tell you that. They're like, look, you're auditioning for 32 teams. Like, it only takes one, though. It takes one team to feel like you can help their franchise. So obviously you don't know where their head's at, but with so many so many you know, positions available right now on the offensive side and needing some game changers on that offensive side. That's why I feel like it takes you out of quarterback. Even if you love a quarterback in this draft, in the first round, that's why, in my opinion, it takes you out of that because you can't afford to draft a guy who may or may not play yeah. when you have other holes on an offense and you have a great defense already and you're trying to put the best team together, it doesn't make the most sense. Exactly. It's not a win-now move, and they have been saying that they are in win-now mode, which I think is appropriate. I mean, yesterday, Jake, to bring a little off-air on air, uh, you did say, and maybe we're just caught up in the moment, but you think the Saints will win 10 games this year? I do. I think they go 10-7. and seven. I know some people in the chat already are uh, talking about that and having that conversation. I truly think they're a 10-7 and seven football team. I'm, I'm if they do the things that we're talking about. Yeah. Like you have to do three things on offense, right? You have to get more offensive weapons. You can't throw Jameis out there with an uncertain Michael Thomas, maybe a suspended Alvin Kamara, Callaway as your as your one again, and you've got Hardy who's a good player. I think Hardy's a good player, but he's a nice He's a nice three, or he's a nice guy to move around. Well, he's him weapon. and Winston are especially good yeah, together. Yeah, and he's a weapon, but you still need, okay, you, you can't have just Michael Thomas over there and Marquez Callaway over here. No. Every coverage is going to be rolled this way. Every bracket's going to be this way, and he'd have to win his one-on-one -on -one matchups, and to this point in his career, that's just not who he's been. I think he would be a nice secondary piece as well, but you need somebody that puts fear in defensive coordinator so when they're game – you know, prepping for you because Adam Troutman, what's he been really good at? Run blocking, not pass catching, right? So again, that takes somebody off the board. If Kamara misses three to six games, that takes somebody off the board. And then it's like, <laughs> where's 13 at? And that's what we're going to worry about. And then Michael Thomas doesn't get off to a, a great start. And yeah. then where's his confidence at coming off another injury? I am interested to see. So one of the things, I mean, and, 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 and that does beg the question, Jake, like, what does happen if you give Jameis weapons? Because he didn't have any last year. And the volume stats were not good, but the efficiency stats were. Uh, yeah, we'll see. we got to go to break. We've gone very long. Uh, when we get back, let's, uh, let's maybe talk a little... Uh, we can talk a little bit about the baseball game real quick tonight. And then, uh, well, there was some drama on the journalistic scene as well. So keep it locked right here on OTV.